Today we'll be talking about the Cluster API release team, uh, history about how, why we started it, how we assembled it, and some of the learnings that we had from running a release team. Uh, I am Yuvaraj, I work at VMware, and I mainly work on Cluster API, and I served as the release lead for the 1.4 release cycle. Yep, and I'm Joe Kratzit. Um, I'm one of the release leads for uh, 1.5, um, and I'm currently one of the maintainers um, of the Cluster API for OCI provider, um, and I work at Oracle. Uh, so today we'll roughly go over the problems that we had and the goals that we set for ourselves to address these problems, the release team, and some of the learnings that we had from running a release team. Uh, so last year at KubeCon EU, uh, we announced Cluster API v1, and that was a huge milestone for the project because it signified a maturity level for the project that means uh, there will be more and more uh, other projects in the community that now start depending on Cluster API. And examples are, for example, the Cluster API provider for OCI, the Cluster API provider for AWS, Azure, and so on. And this means that the Cluster API uh, had to get onto a predictable release cycle so that all of the other projects and softwares that are depending on it can base their own cycles and release planning according to the release schedule that was announced. Um, and other problems that we were trying to address were at that point, until a few weeks, until a few months ago, Cluster API was basically doing releases ad hoc. Uh, as soon as we think that a release is ready, we just used to cut it. No dates announced ahead of time in most cases. And the other problems were, some of the other problems were the releases were mostly done by just a couple of folks within the community, and it was generally the maintainers. And this was generally chore work, and the knowledge about how to cut releases for the project was in their minds, but not really documented. So they were the only ones who were able to do it. They, they knew the know-how of how to cut these things and how to properly get releases out of, uh, out of the project. Uh, so we wanted to address these problems, and we set, a, set some goals for ourselves to address these things. So the first one, as I mentioned, is to move Cluster API to a predictable and determ deterministic re release cycle, and communicate this release cycle ahead of time with all uh, with the community, with the broader community, so that they can plan their own work and their own cycles based on the timeline that we announce. And next is to basically spread the knowledge of how these things are done to more members of the community and not rely on just one or two people because uh, that would not be great both for the health of the community and for like sustainability of the community in mind. And this meant improving our tooling, improving our documentations, and taking advantage of automations to do some of our releases. And we. To start all of this, we started looking at the Kubernetes uh, SIG release team because they were built for prob solving similar problems. And uh, we were looking at them for identifying best practices, some of the learnings that they had. And we tried to come up with what we could do along the same lines. Yeah. So like you said, we, we looked at the Kubernetes SIG um, release cycle, um, and we kind of uh, took the best practices and, and kind of mimicked what they, 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 excuse me, they did there. So we went with a 17-week uh, release cycle, which is about four months, which is what Kubernetes does as well. Um, so in this time, we're going to uh, cut uh, patch release cycles. Um, and these are going to be in predictable times. Um, and so you'll have a minor patch. And then we'll do four of those within the release. And then uh, the other minor patch will be uh, within the, the four weeks, sorry, the four months as well. So that'll be eight patch, patches total. So in this example, uh, we would have the 1.3x uh, release and the 1.4x release uh, multiple times uh, throughout this release cycle. Um, at the same time, uh, we're going to, towards the end, uh, cut two uh, beta releases, um, and as well as two RC releases for the community to test and, and work through. Um, and at the very end, then, we'll have the minor release. Um, and so what that kind of looks like is we're going to have <clears throat> we're going to have this offset from the Kubernetes uh, release cycle um, as Kubernetes is a 
dependency, right? And so there's other dependencies that we have, such as uh, the example here would be uh, container runtime. So we want to make sure we're offsetting, we're pulling in that next version of container runtime that supports the new version of Kubernetes that we're trying to uh, support as well. And so you can see that we're, we're going to, in the 1.4 release that just came out, uh, we're going to pick up the, the new uh, 1.26 as a part of the, the original release. And then over the life cycle, through patches, we'll pick up new releases as well. Um, and so this is a rolling window. So uh, the, the um, 1.4 release will have a, a rolling window. And then the 1.5 will have the rolling window of uh, releases that we'll support as well. So the other thing that we're, like we said, kind of trying to do is make sure all of this is communicated uh, clearly. So in our documentation um, and in our, in our uh, GitHub repository is the documented uh, release cycle um, for the new releases. So this is the, the uh, 1.4 release cycle. So you can see kind of the times of when the next patch is going to come out. And so this will let our providers know uh, when the next patches come out to test. Um, and then we can also inform them of when the betas uh, come out and, and testing. Now that we had the goals that we wanted to achieve and the cycle that we wanted to set ourselves to, the next thing was to form the release team that takes these uh, goals and sets them into action. Uh, so as I previously mentioned, we were looking at the Kubernetes SIG release team to basically get inspiration for how to form our own release team. And looking at that uh, particular SIG release team, we realized that they had a lot more roles to fill than what the cluster API project needed. So we had to shrink the size of that release team to something more suitable to what the cluster API project needed. So we ended up with three broad categories uh, that are part of the release team. One is the release leads team. Uh, the next is the communications, the docs, and the release notes. All of those roles were combined into just one role called the communications manager. And the last one was we had a team that was dedicated on like CI and bug triage and automation. So their role as defined as like just to improve our automation that we have, like maintain CI health, and then bring up if there is any other issues. Joe will go about it. Joe will talk more about it in a bit. And the last part is shadows. Uh, they are a really important part of the release team. We'll go about it in a bit. Uh, so starting with the release lead. So the release lead is overall responsible for making sure that the release is on track. And the primary, uh, primary purpose of the release lead is to make sure that it's uh, all the work across different teams and the community is coordinated. So the release lead is responsible for making sure that if there are any release blocking issues, then they are brought up in the community. Or if there are any critical patches that need to be go that need to go into the project, then they are made sure that they go into some patch release uh, as as di dictated by our backboard policy and so on. And basically take ultimate uh, accountability for the release and making sure the release sticks to the release cycle. Uh, besides these roles, the release lead also was responsible for mainly assembling the current release team and also helping with assembling the next release team and grooming candidates so that they can become the next release leads and release candidates. Yeah, so the next team uh, is the comms team, communication team. Um, and so I was a part of this on the 1.4 release. Um, and so some of the uh, responsibilities are going to be communicating the uh, important dates to the uh, community. Um, so when the next patch release comes out, we try to get that uh, in front of people ahead of time so it's not just uh, uh, jumping up in front of them. Um, <clears throat> and so we try to communicate this via Slack and office hours um, and get that out in front of the community. The other thing that the uh, comms team is responsible for is uh, generating and, and uh, making the release notes uh, uh, prettier um, or more, more readable um, and more communicative, um, as well as um, doing uh, relevant info to the, to the release community. So one of the things that uh, we, we spent a little bit of time on was, was updating notes specifically for our end users as well as the providers, right? So those two different kind of classes of, of users are going to want to and care about different things. Um, so trying to make sure that we, we communicate that in a clear fashion. Um, and then the other thing is uh, improving documentation and automating some of that documentation. Um, so trying to make the job easier of the release team. And so they're all in charge of, of all of that. So some examples that we have of what we try to do, at least 
in the in the Slack channel is informing the users, hey, these are these are the releases. So in this case, the 1.141 release and what's changed and the important relevant information. Uh, with an obvious link back to the uh, actual release itself. Um, and same with the, the RC release. Uh, so that way c people in the community can kind of see, hey, this is what's happening. You know, a lot of people are probably on GitHub notifications. Cool, that's great. But we want to try to make sure it's, it's widely disseminated and shared amongst the group. The other thing that we, we tried to do uh, was, I, I want to say we, we borrowed this from Project Falco probably, but a weekly release um, update. Sorry, not a weekly release, but a weekly update of, of the changes. So we would try to say, hey, how, these are how many PRs that are landed. Here's how many bugs were fixed. Here's, hey, maybe some, some updated features that you might care about and can kind of see those landing on main and getting ready to get into this release, right? That way the community knows what's going on. So trying to just communicate as much as possible. The other, uh, the other big team is the CI team. Um, and so this is kind of a CI and, and bug triage team, right? They're responsible for uh, gating the release. So if a, if a test is failing or something's going wrong, they'll let the re release leads know, hey, something's breaking, let's stop, right? The, the typical things you would expect. Um, but then they're gonna also communicate to the, to the wider group uh, CI is unhealthy, CI is de de uh, degraded, we need to look at this, uh, and working with the community. So they may not actually fix the issue, right? But they're responsible for driving the change. So they might work with the maintainers to say, this is flaky, this is failing, let's, let's make this happen uh, in a fix. Um, and so they typically are the ones that the release lead will say, are we ready to go? And they, they're kind of uh, the blocker if, if things are, are breaking. Um, and then also, just like the release and, uh, uh, community, sorry, the, the comms team, uh, they're responsible for automating and getting uh, that stuff uh, cleaned up and ready to, um, to go. So just a, a real quick example of uh, test, uh, test grid. So they'll, they'll scan this and look to see if, if things are failing. Um, they kind of are also aware of like if the f test is flaky to either pause or, or not for the release. Um, and they, they may set up automation to say, hey, the, the test has failed five times in a row. Uh, let me know uh, instead of having to scan uh, through the, change, uh, through the, the test uh, UI. And so in this case, we're looking very green. Everything's good. So the, the comms team, or sorry, the, the CI team would say, let's go ahead and, and cut the release. The other thing, like I mentioned, was the automation. So in this example, um, they put together a really nice template, super simple, uh, to be able to say there's a flaky test or a failing test, and they, they would be responsible for, for cutting the issue in GitHub to let the maintainers know. So this is a really like simple, easy fix and easy change to make the process a little bit better for the other teams uh, as they come along for the release. So it's just a really simple uh, UI um, to, to drop in uh, changes or, or uh, things that are happening to, to better describe why it's failing and work with the maintainers uh, to, to get uh, the, the failing test fixed. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do with the release team was basically grow the knowledge within more parts of the community and not just limit it to a few members within the a maintenance group or the people who generally work on the project. And shadows is a great way to do it. So we had shadows in every part of the release team. So there were three shadows in the last release team per section. So we had three shadows following the release lead, three shadows following the comps, and three shadows following the CI manager. And uh, they, they, they become ideal candidates both for being part of the next release team leads, being part of growing in the community and becoming reviewers because when they are part of the release team, let's say they are part of the CI team, right? So they, they generally get a sense of, oh, what PRs are going in, what bug fixes are going in, what, what broke tests or what didn't break tests. And they generally get a feel of uh, how the project is laid out and so on. So it's a, great, it's a great excuse for people to go and explore more parts of the project once you become a shadow. And this is a great way for the community to grow because then you have a way for people to get into the community and then just share, uh, grow knowledge. And this uh, segues nicely into the secondary goals that we had was, yeah, grow the community, make it more sustainable. Don't just rely on a few part few members of the maintenance group or a few members of the community that regularly show up, but just find an organic way to grow the community, get more people involved. And uh, being part of the shadows team allowed them to do that because uh, it was a low barrier for entry. And 
uh, the shadows only felt like they 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 just could. It was a great chance for them to just observe what's happening and then jump in and get their get their hands dirty as much as possible, as much as they're willing to do. Right. So we were able to grow the community a little bit. So the knowledge uh, about how our release was cut. Uh, was shared across three times as many people than it was before. So that was a huge improvement that we had by running this release team. And the release team uh, helped us grow the team to become more HA. So we had more members across time zones working in the community. And more of, uh, more of them were available uh, throughout, the, throughout, the, throughout the day to like see the CI's health or maintain the CI's health and see if there were any uh, uh, release blocking items that were, that were coming up and so on. Yeah, and so one thing on the shadows as well, one of the things we're actually trying to do in uh, somewhat of an iterative approach is the release leads team, uh, we're going to hand off actual work to the shadows to drive those changes, right? So um, cutting a release um, shouldn't just be the, the, the release leads uh, only job. Um, so some of the shadows are going to help do that as well. Um, and so I think that's, to Yuvraj's point, is a really great way to grow the community and hand off some of that work um, and, and give people the empowerment to, to uh, work through that stuff. Um, and so some of the stuff that we, we learned across the way, uh, over, sorry, <clears throat> over this time is uh, we've kind of taken the iterative approach. So we're going to make small changes, make them fast and move forward. Um, and so we're also going to make sure we have clear set goals. So part of the release leads uh, goal uh, tasks is to set the goal for the, sorry, the timeline for the, for the release. So that way we can communicate to the, to the wider uh, audience. Um, and so that's where the timelines come in as well. Um, the other thing that I think we found was just simply asking for help. People want to help. People are genuinely good and want to help and grow the community as well, right? So uh, we have 12, I think, actually for the 1.5 release, we have 13 people helping um, to, to uh, get the release out. So that's really awesome. Um, so from the 1.4 release, we've learned how to, you know, some of our improvements. Uh, we did the retrospective, so typically the... The sprint, you know, at the end of a some sort of sort of sprint, you have the uh, retrospective. So we've kind of got, got the retrospective. We have clear goals, uh, clear actions to hand off to the next uh, release lead. So we also wanted to do a warm handover between the, the different leads. So in this example, uh, Yuvaraj and I got together and did a warm handoff to say, OK, here's some action items. Um, then you can take those and uh, move those forward. So getting the warm handoff helps uh, knowledge transfer as well. And then lastly, um, inter-team communication. So trying to have the comms team or the release leads team uh, communicate internal to each other before uh, going to the wider audience of the, the community to kind of uh, work through some, some issues or, and work off the round, uh, sorry, round off the corners of some rough, um, rough work. So for example, uh, the weekly comms release, we talked about that internally in the comms team before we went to the wider audience to say, hey, we're going to do this. Um, and so that way we could kind of work um, with, with a little bit of um, privacy and kind of work through that before we went to the, the wider community. So kind of moving, moving through the releases, right? we want to streamline this process. So the 1.3 release was an ad hoc release cycle. The 1.4 uh, release was the actual first release team release um, with some documentation updates and, and um, uh, automation. The 1.5 hopes to improve upon 1.4 to really streamline the process, get automation in place, get documentation updated, um, and then kind of hand that over to the 1.6 and really keep moving this more into a streamlined fashion. Right, The fun bit about what we do is automating it so we can actually go do the fun bits, right? Like, I don't want to sit there and click a button that says, hey, we have to release this, then update the notes, then do this. So the idea would be one button click, then we get the release out, um, and so we can go work on the fun, fun bits of, of what, we, what we enjoy. Um, so since the 1.3 release, um, the comms team had a bunch of templates we set up. Uh, to automate some more of the, uh, note uh, the release notes processes, as well as automation uh, tools. Um, the, the CI team has done quite a bit on around uh, automating tools as well. Um, but the, the big thing, in my opinion, uh, is, is we have some really good documentation on how to actually cut the release, how to do the tasks. Um, and that's all out there in our, in our repository. And this is 
huge because it formalized the release work um, to, to hand it over to just about anybody, right? Um, so the term runbook was something new to me when I came to Oracle, but basically it's just a way to document the process. I assume we all do that. Um, I just had not heard the term uh, runbook before. But uh, I think the 1.4 release had a really well documented, here's how to cut the release. And then when I, the 1.5 came along, we had to quickly cut a uh, 1.4 uh, patch release. And that was a very quick process thanks to the runbook and the documentation. So this was a huge uh, improvement from the maintainers, uh, getting the document out of their head and onto the paper. Um, so that, that way the rest of the community can run with the process. So the big improvements that have been made with the, the release team is the predictable releases, right? Like if we can communicate that to our providers to say next, in four months, you're going to have a new release. And then the next four months, we're going to have a new, new minor release as well. That's critical to the providers. So that way they can prepare and understand what's, what's coming. Um, uh, the, the knowledge transfer uh, is huge as well to be able to get the community to grow. Um, so it's, uh, really, really important so that way it's not just two or three people doing all the work and also so it's not in their head alone, right? So um, anytime something's in my head, I try to get it documented as quickly as possible so that way I can share it because uh, it just makes life a whole lot easier when you want people to work with, with your, your team. Um, and I, I think, I forget who said this, but it's a, it's, a, it's a stabilizing function for the ecosystem, right? So that way you can predictably know when the next patch and next update is gonna, is gonna happen. So just a real quick, like here's the release, uh, release timelines in months. Um, and you can kind of see it was all over the place before 1.3. And then after 1.3, it's been a four month solid cadence, right? So uh, typical growth, growth graphs you want to see up and to the right. Um, but this, in this case, you kind of want to see down and flat, right? So that way we're continuously doing the same for four months. Um, so basically to recap, the problem was not predictable releases, knowledge transfer was not happening, it was in, it was in people's heads. So the, the, the maintainers in the community came up with uh, the, the release cycle to kind of parody um, cluster API, sorry, uh, to parody uh, Kubernetes. Um, they, they developed and documented the release team and the release team tasks. And then over time, the release team is gonna drive and, and uh, improve the, the change process to get the releases out on a, time, a timely manner. So all that to say, the 1.4, sorry, the 1.6 release is coming up in August, and we would really love to continue to grow the community. So we're looking for people who can, can write code, d uh, document, um, run projects. So any kind of skill set is what we're looking for. And if you guys are interested, um, we have uh, the, the Slack, we have a weekly office hours, um, or you can come speak to you, Raj, or myself about trying to join the team and helping us grow. Um, with that, is there any questions? <laughs>